isn't any. You're getting warmer. Okay, Stephanie. Count the antennae. You're getting colder. A tenny, a tenny. Warmer, warmer. I've got it. The antennae are different. Moths have fuzzy antennae, and butterflies have smooth antennae with a little ball at the end. Yes! For your outstanding achievement in the field of telling butterflies for moths, here is your prize. A moth hat. Thanks, but I want the book too. No problem. It's full of information about which animals are what and why, which can sometimes come in very handy. On December 13, 1984, two F-18s were flying low on an exercise when an unknown object struck the windshield of one of the jets. It hit with such force that it shattered the glass windshield and even cracked the pilot's crash helmet. The jet went out of control, but the skilled pilot was able to regain control of his plane and land it safely. But what hit the windshield? While inspecting the cockpit, a few feathers were found. Could it possibly have been a bird? A detective was called in on the case. A detective? A detective who uses classification to solve mysteries. Her name is Roxy Laybourne. She's an ornithologist at the Smithsonian Institute. These are the bird remains that they sent to be identified. They send you just these little bit of feathers to identify what kind of bird it was? Sometimes I get less than that. <laughs> these hardly even look like feathers. Well, when I clean them up, you'll see that they will look like feathers. But how could a bird break a windshield? Well, it depends upon the speed of the plane, how much damage the bird does, as well as upon the weight of the bird. And if it's a larger bird and the plane's going faster, it'll do more damage than if it's a small bird and the plane going slower. But even a small bird, if the plane's going at a high speed, will cause damage. How come animals ever developed feathers in the first place? Well, <laughs> don't ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> Means there's something you don't know about birds? Well, sure, there's plenty I don't know, but uh, birds were developed from reptiles, and the material on the scales of reptiles is similar to the material in feathers, you say. Oh, really? But, yeah. Well, what's the first thing we do to try and identify the feathers? Well, you can't identify dirty feathers, so I have to wash these. Mm -hmm. I don't like detergents because that t removes too much of the oil from the feathers in my opinion. So I'll take a small amount of soap and put it in here. Mm -hmm. And then I will put my feathers in here and then we'll go over and get some warm water. So we're going to take my forceps with me so we can have something to mix it all up. I have to be careful. I can't have the water going in too fast or I may lose my feathers. <laughs> and now I won't have it. So then I come back over here, I don't want to keep and mix all this up with my brew. <laughs> I don't have many feathers here, but then the washing process isn't quite as long, but then the identification may be longer. Nah. If I had lots of feathers, sometimes I spend a half a day in it wash, just washing the feathers. This is routine you have to put up with so you can get to the good part. But is that fun for you? Do you like doing that? Who would? <laughs> I'll see if I can get the specimen on the screen now. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. That's the little piece of feather. Yeah, that's uh, just a small portion of that, uh, of the down. And this is the smallest division of the feather, mm -hmm. which are called barbules. And where they come together are little tiny spiny structures that uh, offer a clue to which family this bird is going to belong to. The amazing part is that every group of birds has such delicate detail. And that's where I get my satisfaction from the work. Every day I learn something new. Every day is exciting. You never get bored. So now do you know what the bird was? Well, I have an idea. Let's darken the room so we can see it a little better, and I'll go to higher magnification. It looks like it belongs in a group of 
vulture or it could be an eagle. I think I have the culprit. You do? What is it? Well, uh, it looks a little bit... See, the feathers are large mm -hmm. and they're dark and uh, it looks like it might be a vulture. A vulture? Oh, yeah. Let's look at this picture here. Yeah. Now, you see, here's a picture of a turkey vulture in the book. So we know for sure that it's a turkey well, vulture. Well, not necessarily, because it might be a black vulture. So when we will go to the collection and uh, get some specimens and check the feathers against known specimens. So that's why the Smithsonian has such a huge collection. Any feather you get, you can compare it to some real bird. And let me see where we we'll think the specimens we want are not only in this case. Let's see. These are turkey vultures. Here's a nice specimen. Like, like so. And are we going to look at a black vulture too? Yes. Now we'll find. Here's some black vultures from Florida. See the difference in the color? Isn't the turkey vulture pretty? So now we'll compare these feathers? Yes, let's uh, check them, see if they match either one of these birds. Here's the whole one. Well, that, you see, sent with the curve. Now, it comes from, but well, see, it's, it's the wrong curve for that wing. Oh. So we have to go to this wing. Oh, it's just the yeah, same curve. Yeah, one of these little wing feathers here. And we can find one. You see, it's one of these larger ones right here. Mm -hmm. And if you notice how white the base of the feather is, mm -hmm. let's check the black vulture and see, see how, see that's a dull black and doesn't have the purple iridescence that the uh, uh, turkey vulture has. But we, we will check it at the same location. But you see the feather oh. doesn't match. Yeah, the down and in here is brown. That's right, and the down on the turkey vulture is white. So it was a bird like this that hit the airplane. That's what I would say. It's such a shame. It's such a beautiful bird. What can we do to, to keep this from happening to other beautiful birds? Well, I, I don't know as long as planes are flying in the air and birds are flying in the air, they're bound to have collide sometimes. So Roxy Laybourne has solved another case. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Z, I've been reading this encyclopedia, and now I have a game for you. In this game, I show you pictures of three animals. You have to tell me which of the animals has the most in common with a horse, and why. No problem. In round one, the contestants are a clam, a beetle, and a frog. Which one of these animals has the most in common with a horse? It's the frog. Frogs have backbones and so do horses. Beetles and clams don't. You're absolutely right for 10 points. There are points in this game? Next up, which of these animals has the most in common with a horse? A chicken, a lizard, or a mouse? The mouse. Mice are mammals and so are horses. Chickens are birds and lizards are reptiles. Right again for 10 more points. I knew I would be good at this game. So far, now, which of these mammals has the most in common with a horse? A giraffe, a rhinoceros, or a cow? Okay, no way it's the rhinoceros. Now, a giraffe or a cow, that's a hard one. But I have to say the giraffe. It's sort of shaped the same way, and its hair is kind of the same. Well, Z, you're wrong. Okay, so it's the cow. Wrong again. The rhino has the most in common with a horse. Now, for bonus points, tell me why. You have 15 seconds. Uh, they both have manes, except for the rhino, no. They both have warty skin, except for the horse. 
They both have... Gee, I don't know. Here's a hint. They're both barefoot. <laughs> Horses and rhinos are related. They both belong to a group of animals called perissodactyls. You can tell a perissodactyl by its hooves and its odd number of toes. Horses have one toe covered with a thick nail, the hoof. Rhinos have hooves too, and three toes. Another odd number. This odd number of toes is a clue that not so long ago, horses and rhinos had an ancestor in common. And there are other animals in that group too, like maybe zebras. They look just like horses, except for the stripes. But there's another weird one. Tapers. No way. Three toes. Unbelievable. Hey, Stephanie, what would I have gotten if I'd won? What do you think, Z? Three-toed socks. <laughs> I want my hat back. <laughs> group living things according to their common features, the physical things that are alike. When a group of living things has features in common, scientists can figure out how they are related to each other and even solve mysteries. Grouping living things in this way is called classification. 3 to 1 Classroom Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.